So this may be like a really weird title, but the title is the truth. Kinky and holy does not mix. Doesn't mix. Um, I've noticed lately that, you know, before I would dream about people. I would go to like certain individuals that I knew and I would tell them whatever it was that I dreamed. But I'm noticing lately it's like super abstract. It's like super, super abstract. And I'm like, what is this? But I think I figured it out today. I pray that I figured it out today. But I always look at it like, even if it's not exactly what God is like, Trisha, this is what I'm trying to tell you. I always get messages that I can pull from my dreams. And the one last night, the message is definitely kinky and holy does not mix. And I was reminded that when you're dreaming something, you know, like I've I've said it before, it's just a matter of like, have I done it myself where I'm trying to look at things on a surface level, like who does this, who does this uh, deal with or who does this represent, da, 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 go back to the Bible. What does the Bible say? And I dreamed of two different houses last night. One was a kinky house. One was a holy house. Just let me explain. So the holy house was, it was just sort of like this scene where it was like, you know, um, believers coming together and they were like fellowshipping, you know, having like a good time, like um, music, eating, you know, just having a really good, holy good time. And then there was another scene where this girl, she bought a kinky house. That's the best word that I can use to describe. That's the, the best phrase that I can use to describe it. Because apparently when she, she bought the house, from somebody else who also ran the house as a kinky house where they went in and did kinky stuff. Everybody knew, well, the people that were in that, they knew that house was the kinky house. And there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a point in the dream where the two, the two, there were two girls that were like affiliated with the kinky house. Like, as I recall, they went to go visit somebody who was affiliated with the the bad house, right? When they went, they discovered that this young man that was affiliated with this house had, he was no longer alive. He was no longer alive. And it was his fault, the reason he was not alive. He decided to not be alive, if that makes sense. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, so when I woke up, of course, I'm like, what is this, right? And as I was getting ready this morning, the thought came to my mind, well, what are two houses in the Bible? What are two houses in the Bible? So I Googled, and it came up with the parable of the two houses. So I was like, let me see what they're talking about. So this is Matthew 7, verses 24 through 29. And it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall. For it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Kinky and holy does not go together. So again, it's like, I still, you know, I pray, I'm like, God, show me what this means. But just on the surface, looking at that, when you are affiliated with things that are not holy, where's the protection? Where's your protection? Because another thing, thank you, God, because I, I, I forgot the, another key part, another key part to the holy house. 
where they were, you know, having the, the Christian party, holy party, Christ follower party, whatever you want to call it. There was a father who called, I guess, to inquire about where his daughter was going to be. And somebody was telling them, oh, it's so good. Like, it's so fine. We even have security at the party. At the holy party. The house, the fellowship of good, good, goodness. There was security there. That was a, a key part. So again, this question of, are you protected in your kinky house? What types of things are you opening yourself up to in the kinky house? And I mean, I, I, I like to look at things as symbols and things like that. And I, I guess I ask the question, if it's not something kinky, what is the unholy house that you might be living in, that you might be partaking in? What unholiness are you living in? that could bring about destruction, that could bring about the rain that falls, the floods that come, the winds that, that blow and slam against your house and it will not stand. Because again, looking at these two dreams, they're two houses, like distinct. I see that they're two different houses, two different scenes, two different types of people. One house is protected and the other is not. The other is just wide open, doing whatever, all types of perversion. Now, I didn't see, I just knew, you know what I'm saying? Like, never mind, that's, that's a whole nother video. But it's like, I knew, right? And it was other parts of it where it was, you could tell it was sensual things that were happening even before getting to the house. Kinky and holy doesn't go together. And it makes me think of like people who are comfortable with going to church, who are comfortable with preaching the gospel, who are comfortable with like pouring into people, but they are in a known, they, they know that their house is not built on a strong foundation, that their house is built on kinkiness and not holiness, but they still continue on. And I'll say this and I'll end. Hopefully, yeah, because, you know, um, this reminds me, you know how, well, there have been times before where you put your clothes in a washer, you're like doing other stuff around the house, the washer goes through a whole wash cycle, and you forgot to put the laundry detergent in there. So it washed in dirtiness. So really, you got to wash it again. So that's what that reminds me of when people, they mix kinky with holy, or they mix Un, like, cause you know, cause kinky is one thing that may not be your thing. That it, your, your unholy may be something else. Not saying you're like, you know, I'm just saying in general for the general message, but it's like you're washing clothes. You're going to church. You're hearing the word, but you're still never adding detergent to the load. So what's the point? And I know some people will be like, oh, well, come as you, yes, come as you are. But eventually my question is, when is a change going to happen? When is the laundry that you're putting in there to be washed? When is it going to be clean? Why do you not have a conscience for what you're doing? Do you not realize that kinky and holy does not mix? But yeah, and I have another one. <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to share that kind of goes hand in hand with that whole thing of when you dream it, look for it in the Bible, look for that similar theme in the Bible. So, I mean, I, I, I pray that this blessed somebody. Okay. Bye.